for absolute fools like myself, I, I'm doing a portrait of myself. I'm doing something that I've, I've completely washed it out. Click on the detail recovery. Now, um, with the detail recovery, you're given a new brush. It's um, a brush that is going to pull directly from the original source material at 4% here at the top under opacity. So we're now going to go in and, as you said earlier, this is what I recommend earlier, if you want more detail in a particular area, you can increase that opacity, but I really recommend that you leave it a low because now I'm going to take multiple strokes over this and if I if I work over here 4% is really light okay okay it's too little it's too little let's just increase it just a bit let's see what happens so now so now I'm painting with the original image of the apple and if I scrub in an area too long the original will start to scrape through. But if you need to define an edge or add a little bit of detail, some veins to these leaves, or especially for portraits, because if I can't, you know, I make the eyes look really, you know, bring back some of the detail or the highlights within the eyes, that's what this detail recovery step number six is all about. Now, Wes, I'm uh, this is actually uh, for a, a short amount of time. It's actually looking a little bit like a an, an oil painting on this canvas. Um, let's um, finish this up. Oh, because I want to show one more thing, um, one more panel. Let's finish this one up. Show you that other panel, then ans answer some questions. Um, detail recovery, finishing touches. Finishing touches will flatten the image and add that um, high pass sharpening layer as a separate layer. So here's um, before, here's before, and then after. The high pass um, gives you just a little bit of snap to the brush strokes so you can see them, makes the canvas and the um, paints uh, look like they're reacting to each other um, together in this particular process. Um, let me go ahead and open up another image, Wes, so we can close this down. So um, to close this all off, um, I wanted to show one more thing related to painting. When you want to give the illusion you have no talent like myself and you want to give the illusion that you've done a really interesting painting, it's just not quite there. There's one more panel I want to discuss and that's my paper, Adobe Paper Texture Panel in combination with, combine this with um, the whole process of painting so the paper texture panel again can be downloaded from the extension from what did we learn earlier um, from the Adobe Exchange or from my website it's a simple way um, to set a blend mode here at the top target a layer within your document and then use the predefined existing Flypaper textures, really great set of textures, and all you do is click on one of the textures, and then that texture is applied to this particular project in this overlay mode. Let's shift this to multiply and click on the texture again, and now it multiplies it into the background like this. And Let's go in and run my randomizer, and let's see what randomizer will do. I'm going to move this. Um, let's move our target this layer and hit randomizer. And now let's shift back over to overlay. So 
So I get to choose the blend mode. Randomizer is going to randomly choose some textures or patterns within this set and apply them to the image. And then I can go back in and turn them on or off. But I think this is a really interesting combination of yeah, distressing your canvas, of bringing in different textures, um, adjusting the opacity of those different textures and combining them together with your painting um, and uh, in this process. So once again, um, we saw watercolor painting, we saw oil painting simulations. It's choosing everything for you. If you have talent, you can look good. If you don't have talent, you can still look good. <laughs> and um, those are available on russellbrown.com. And um, uh, Wes, I think we can finish it up with some uh, questions and answers. If anybody's still there listening to me, and uh, did I miss anything, Wes? I <laughs> no, no I, I think you got a lot of it there, Russell. You know, a couple of things. I, I, I have to kind of chime in here. I've used the, um, I've not used the watercolor assistant yet. I thoroughly enjoyed the, the quote, painting assistant, which simulates the oil painterly kind of a style. Yeah. Uh, and I have to say, I absolutely loved it. It did take a little bit of experimentation, but I think that's part of the, that's yeah. part of the process. Oh, Wes, I think, um, as I said, certain talent <laughs> you you have to i'm handing you a tool and you have to learn to you it's 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 you have to learn to walk using that particular tool um or in this case paint um and to, you can listen to my tutorials you know watch my tutorials but i think you really need to pick up the brush and you have a way of working with your wacom and and if you don't have a Wacom and you buy one today, I could actually get my kids through college if they <laughs> buy a Wacom from Wes. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, think I, I if do. You're a... thinking, if you're thinking of getting a Wacom, I think it's a great way to start and um, to to hand some have somebody hand you the brushes and then start to understand. And then I want you to quickly move away from my crazy panels. And do much better. It's this is a training wheels for painting. Um, you know, just along the lines. Here you can see a progression. These are a series of paintings I did of the exact same image, and each time I did it, I got different results. Just take a look at this. So here's here's the original, and then this is one time, the second time, a third time. Notice I just started just the variations that you can make just by the way in which you lay down each of these layers I found was pretty crazy um, and when's the painting done I mean, here's a that I, I, that is the biggest challenge right there yeah. <laughs> I like <laughs> this one because it was so cloudy and undefined um, and this one I just started getting just start take the biggest brush possible and just start dabbing the paints as if they're bleeding across the canvas, um, uh, which is pretty cool. Here's an image uh, from Linda King um, on, I, she frequents um, a Facebook account and I saw her do this the second day I released this and like, oh cool, like someone with talent <laughs> is picking this up and using it. <laughs> So. Yeah, I, I tell you, it really is. It's uh, you, you will lose hours exploring and experimenting mm -hmm. and and just working on the same image a number of times. Mm -hmm. All right, so a couple questions. Yeah. Um, one of the questions that I had was, and, and if you can do this quickly, because I do want to get a couple of these other questions answered. Yeah. Yeah. Can you review and possibly show the steps of installing the script using the uh, Adobe ex uh, extensions? Very manager? good question. Um, um, let's go back to Photoshop, and um, so, in let's go to um, Adobe Exchange, and we want to find. Um, let's go for the free 
and um, we should be able to type in paint. Um, let's see if um, if mine comes up under paint. I hit the paint. Uh, someone had chimed in saying they could not find it, and there it is. Okay, <laughs> so never mind that. I typed in paint. Now keep in mind, the painting assistant is in Adobe Exchange. I haven't had the opportunity to post the watercolor assistant yet. So you can find the painting assistant and my texture panel in Adobe Exchange, but my watercolor assistant is only on russellbrown.com. I'm sorry. And they're all on russellbrown.com in one location um, to simplify your life that way. So if I wanted to load this, I click on it and click free in this particular case. It downloads it. Oh my gosh, Wes, if this actually works, we're in trouble. It's working! <laughs> and on your machine is an application called Adobe Extension Manager, in this case CS6. It's downloading it and it's loading it into the manager and then you can accept, are you willing to ex the, accept Russell Brown? You click accept. Now, in my case, it's already loaded, but let's just see if I can crash it. So I'm going to say I'd like to, to write over the existing one. Now, in some cases, you, we, you will need to quit from Photoshop, but it will tell you um, install. Um, in this case, Adobe has successfully been installed. In this case, it did not, you did not have to quit Photoshop to install it. However, Wes, you will need to quit from Photoshop um, in order to see the panel within your set here under extensions. Just so if you install it from the Adobe Exchange, you then need to quit from Photoshop in order to see it here and load it. A little confusing because it says it's been successfully installed, but in fact, you need to do the reboot. Is gotcha. That that is clear. And then for those that had downloaded from your website, you can launch the, the Adobe Exchange Manager from your application folder, much like you would Photoshop. Yes. And then install the that Macintosh, way. On the Macintosh, that's a very good point. On the Macintosh, you can double click on the, um, the installer that downloads, and it will automatically open the Extension Manager. Um, where is the Extension Manager? Oh, it's over there. Yeah. Um, so it'll automatically open it. On the PC, however, do a right click on the installer that downloads. Right click with your mouse and then pull up. You need to load it as the administrator to your PC. In many cases, the biggest problems that happen are with the installation of my panels um, and not the use of my panels. So on a PC, once again, right click on the installation file and then load as administrator so that it will not be blocked by your PC because I'm placing things into your Photoshop folder. Um, for absolute fools like myself, I, I'm doing a portrait of myself. I'm doing something that I've, I've completely washed it out. Click on the detail recovery. Now, um, with the detail recovery, you're given a new brush. It's um, a brush that is going to pull directly from the original source material at 4% here at the top under opacity. So we're now going to go in and as you said earlier, this is what I recommend earlier, if you want more detail in a particular area, you can increase that opacity, but I really recommend that you leave it a low because now I'm going to take multiple strokes over this and if I, if I work over here, 4% is really light. Okay. Okay, it's too little. It's too little. Let's just increase it just a bit. Let's see what happens. So now, 
So now I'm painting with the original image of the apple. And if I scrub in an area too long, the original will start to scrape through. But if you need to define an edge or add a little bit of detail, some veins to these leaves, or especially for portraits, because if I can't, you know, I make the eyes look really, you know, bring back some of the detail or the highlights within the eyes, that's what this detail recovery
see my attempt at a watercolor from the Lincoln portrait. But I, of course, I did my homework and did my still lifes before I took on anything as complex or as good looking as Lincoln is in this image or this image. <laughs> um, you're, supposed to, you're, you're laughing now? I, I am laughing, yes. I'm I, just I only see yourself. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to do, let's see what I'm going to follow up. Oh, if I follow up, just repeat, but as I do a reboot here, um, this is uh, West where we can find the scripts and panels and actions. Gosh, and what's this adamconference.com? Wow, I wonder... Wes, if someone could go to a conference and see both of theirs, you and myself at that conference, and learn these techniques in person with Russell Brown. Wow, I bet they could go to something like adamconference.com and learn about that event, Wes. Jeez. That sounds exciting. Boy, uh, <laughs> Wes told me not to do any blatant sales pitches here <laughs> on this broadcast, but uh, boy, if they went there while I, they could go there right now, Wes, while I'm rebooting Photoshop. <laughs> Let's quit from Photoshop. <laughs> and, As we pause for this brief station identification. Yeah. <laughs> And let's see if I can open up my project again. Hey, while that's coming back up, Russell, a couple yeah. people had some questions about yeah. uh, changing the opacity of the highlights and things like that. Um, yeah, yeah. For professionals, <laughs> change your, um, you can change the size of your brush, change the opacity of those brushes, but keep in mind, as you do that, when you change the opacity, um, uh, it's um, in the case of watercolor changing the opacity no problem in the case if now my um, painting an oil painting if I change the opacity in an oil painting it not only changes the opacity of the brush it changes how much detail that you're using from the original source image how much are you pulling back so changing opacity in this next demo has a dramatic change in making it look more impressionist, whereas increasing opacity makes it look more realistic. Is that a good answer? Uh, I bet I think that's a good answer. Wait for it. Thank you. <laughs> As I said, Wes, just reboot Photoshop and sometimes my panels come back to life. So as I said earlier, now we're doing oil painting and we wanted to destroy the image before we started with a little bit of um, the oil paint filter. Now we're going to do a rough underpainting and cross our fingers that we don't get that same error message. We didn't! Now, this process of oil painting is using, over here to the left, is using the mixer brush which is chosen for us. It's I've automatically set up all the appropriate settings here for the mixer brush and all of the load, mix, and flow. These were crazily, they were, they, they're complex. They're complex. And I wanted to simplify this for people who wanted to jump into oil painting without having to get too caught up in understanding that process um, immediately and they would better understand the process through using my painting assistant. So once again I've loaded the correct brushes for you, I've loaded the correct presets, I've put in a canvas for you to paint on and you're painting on a separate layer so that you always have a separation between your canvas and your original. Also notice here to the right that the original image always remains in this case because we're sampling all layers as it says here at the top and the question came up about changing opacity we're sampling all layers but as you can see in this process if I change the opacity it determines how much of the original source we're using in this painting process so here we go 
Step number one, I'm using the standard everyday, um, oh, excuse me, I'm using, not using the standard every, I'm using the, um, what is this, Wes? This is the art pen. And the art pen has barrel rotation, and you can see my barrel rotation happening up on the screen as I twist and rotate. You can see the preview happening in the upper left-hand corner, and you can see the brush preview changing. So my first step in this process, and of course, if you're a professional, stop laughing, because my suggestion is that I'm going to hold down the um, I'm I'm holding down the uh, the pressure onto my tablet, and I'm angling my pen with a strong angle, so that I'm take the 3D quality of this particular brush and really stretch it out so I'm scraping the brush over the surface as you see here. And I like to lay down this sort of base coat to sort of reveal my image underneath and give me a base to work from. And again, as I'm following the great masters, I always, I, I don't try and fill in the whole image. I'm just like scraping the surface. It's like taking your chalk or something and um, moving it over the surface. And notice that um, in this case, there's a texture built into this particular brush and there's a texture in the canvas that I'm working on. The two are working nicely together in this process, um, in this oil painting. So there I've got a basic um, setting here that I used with step number three. And you notice in this particular case, this panel isn't quite as sophisticated and as advanced as the other panel because this is the one I created in Configurator. And each step doesn't turn itself off um, I do warn you not to use previous steps, uh, but um, this one, you have to remember which step you're on, and that's, hey, if I can't even remember what I had for breakfast this morning, um, it's sometimes tough to remember what step I'm on. Okay, let's see uh, if I covered everything. Okay, we're moving forward. Oh, look, look at this, Wes. I was afraid that I wouldn't have anything to talk about, and I wouldn't be able to fill up my entire hour. <laughs> as he laughs. Um, start intermediate. Did you notice the canvas um, quality change there? I'm changing the opacity of the canvas. Um, hold on a second. And so now we're going to go in. Now check this out. So now, now we're using a mixer brush and we're mixing the colors around. We're using portions of the original and then the mixer brush. Oh, look, it actually looks like I have talent, Wes. Um, but you go through and you start to mix the colors around. And this is what I call the paint by numbers approach for beginners. If you stay within the shape of the leaf, <laughs> I'm not, I'm, la the pros are laughing. If you stay within the shape of the leaf and follow the contours of your subject, <laughs> I'm laughing at myself, um, you get pretty good results. If you just do a broad mishmash across your image, you won't get, um, it won't start to look like a painting um, in the process. And your goal is to really mix your paints. And you know, if you like the Van Gogh effect, do scribbles um, with your pen. But I like more of a brush stroke effect. And notice, if you want this highlight to extend down, click in the highlight area and move it this way. Click in the shadow area and move it up. Oh my gosh, I've actually learned something from um, the Tim Shelburne's of the world um, in painting. And um, here I'm going into my Zen mode. Don't drift away from the microphone, Russ. Don't drift away from the microphone. Can you change your brush size? Yes. 
but I like the quality of this smaller brush. And I'm just hitting click, 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 bleeding colors around, getting my basic um, rough underpainting in position. But you know, sometimes, sometimes I just like this, the, the quality of this um, underpainting has a really nice quality to it. And again, for beginners, where are my colors coming from? They're coming from the original image here, over here in my panel. So I, I never have to go to the color palette. Um, I'm laughing about that. Um, but it's uh, I'm too lazy to go to the color palette. Let's extend that out over there. OK, we've got a pretty nice underpainting. Don't forget to leave some of your canvas showing. Don't forget to leave mistakes. I think that's what really gives the quality of a, a great um, oil painting is to see the brush strokes and see the mistakes um, within your image. Okay, where were we? I forgot. What did I have for breakfast? Um, I was not on this one. What happens if I click on step number four? It tells me, isn't that amazing that I'm on step number four? It means go to step number five. So, so now we have much more a smaller brush with more detail. So now I'm using the ability here on my um, Intuos 5 with the barrel rotation. I can rotate my brush um, with or against. Oh look, somebody's calling me on the phone, Wes. If it was my wife, I would have had to answer it, and then everybody could have heard what my wife was going to ask me. <laughs> Everybody laughed. Um, but it is not what my wife it is merely receiving, and I hope that's not a problem of my little ring in the background. I didn't turn that off. And here we go into my Zen mode again. Um, we're adding more detail. You have, um, let me explain that again, we're pulling more detail from our original image. So this has, as you paint, it looks like you're smearing colors around, but it's using um, a higher percentage of the original image is coming through in this process, um, if that makes clear. As, you, as I'm working on this edge over here, you can see that the definition of the edge of this apple is easier to define with this step number five in this process. Hey, this actually looks good. I think I saw this when make, wait, I remember this from art school. Make contrast by adjusting the colors surrounding the apple instead of working on the apple. Whoa, whoa, Wes, I remembered something from college. Um, finally, um, uh, we're getting close here. We can answer some questions. Um, the we did number five, detail recovery. So this is for absolute fools like myself. I, I'm do 